Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall, back again today talking about Varengard. These are some guys that I have only been recently getting turned on to, and I wanted to do some math hammer and run through everything with all of y'all so you can uh, see what my line of thinking is. First thing I want to do is compare these guys to Chaos Knights. And the reason I want to do that is that they're basically serving the same function in your army. Movement is about the same. They're both cavalry units. They're both pretty durable. They can both grind pretty well. You know, they both can take weapons that are better on the charge. You know, they have a lot going on that is very similar. And also, a unit, like a full unit, is 15 wounds. So it it, there's a pretty good one-to-one -one comparison that we can make with these. So, Chaos Knights, we have um, three different weapon options. Your Ensorcelled Weapons, your Lance, or your Flail. And then everybody gets the Trampling Hooves. So, Ensorcelled Weapons are always three attacks on threes and threes, rend one, one damage. The Cursed Lance, two attacks, fours and threes, no rend one damage. But it becomes... Uh, rend 2, 2 damage when you charge. Then the Cursed Flail is D6 attacks, 4s and 3s. No rend, 1 damage. And of course the Trampling Hooves that everybody gets, 2 attacks, 4s and 4s, no rend, 1 damage. Uh, the Horn Blower gives them plus 1 to run and charge. They can take a Mark of Chaos. Their Standard Bearer gives them plus 1 Bravery, so they are Bravery 8. Uh, which is rarely all that important. The The big important thing to note there is that, you know, you need to lose more than two knights in uh, one turn in order to potentially fail a Battleshock test, so that's pretty good for them. Um, their Chaos Rune Shields ignore mortal wounds on a 5-up, um, and you uh, your opponents are minus one bravery when they're within three inches of them. So this is just a quick look at what their damage output looks like. Uh, Ensorcelled Weapons uh, are going to do about four and three quarters of a damage per turn. Lances, when they're not on the charge, are 1.83. Lances on the charge, one, uh, I'm sorry, 6.11. And the Flail is 4.33. The Hooves add an additional 1.25. So... The Ensorcelled Weapons are a nice happy medium between the Lance on the charge and the Lance not on the charge. Um, the Flail is always going to be an inferior option. This damage output, just for reference, this is uh, including an assumption of a 4-up save that it's going up against. And the damage out per, per point, that is just for comparison later on to the Varengard, so we can see what their efficiency per point looks like. The Varengard, these also have three different options for weapons. They have Ensorcelled Weapons, six attacks, threes and threes, rend one, one damage. The Fell Spear, three attacks, threes and fours, rend one, two damage. And that becomes uh, um, a four, three up to wound and two rend on the charge. Then Demon Forged Blades, three attacks, threes and threes, minus one D3 damage. And sixes to hit do a mortal wound on those. Um, so overall, these guys also get Marks of Chaos. They're... Mounts, Tearing Fangs, three attacks each, uh, fours, threes, no rend, one damage. They can pile in and attack twice, once per game. They have the same uh, Warp Steel Shields, uh, five up. Actually, I'm sorry, they are not the same as Chaos Knights. They do not ignore all mortal wounds. This is just ignoring the effects of spells and endless spells on a five up. And they all get plus one to hit if they are in the army with Archaeon. So this is what our base stats look like. Ensorcelled weapons at uh, 6.83. Fell spears not charging 5.5. Spell fell spears charging 8.17. And demon forged blades 
at 8.33. So you're on base, your Demon Forged Blades are actually better than your Fell Spears on the charge. That is really interesting to me. Um, now you'll might note uh, if you are paying close attention, our damage output per point here is less than what you get from Chaos Knights. Um, and all of this, by the way, is not taking into consideration marks of chaos that is going to be on future slides. So the important takeaway here is that without taking into consideration a mark of chaos in a Slaves to Darkness army, your Demon Forged Blades are actually the best damage output and they don't care if you charge or not. Now, this also can change if you go Knights of the Empty Throne, make them a wizard with an artifact, and then use um, Flaming Weapon on them to increase their damage. You, in that case, would want to use Ensorcelled Weapons so that you're doing like 13 and change damage per turn. Um, when the flaming weapons turned on, so that is uh, really good. You'll also notice that uh, the damage is actually fairly consistent. Like, there's not a big difference between the 6.83 and the 8.33. It's like one and a half. It's like not having your fangs and claws attacks. Um, so yeah, that is our base. Now we look at what is happening when we have Marks of Chaos in your Slaves to Darkness army. Um, again, this is specifically Slaves to Darkness. This is not when you are adding Varengard into another army when they are coalition. Um, then you're just using the base amounts, plus whatever other bonuses you can get them. So here... Um, we have two different tables here for corn because in general corn gives you reroll ones to hit and then if you're within the aura of your general then you also get plus one to wound now you'll notice here that the fell spear actually doesn't change on the charge really because the plus one to wound doesn't do anything because the plus one to wound doesn't stack with the plus one to wound you're getting on the war scroll. Overall, you're getting a nice bump in power, but not huge, right? Like, rerolling ones to hit is really not that powerful of an ability. The plus one to wound is definitely stronger, and we're going to see in comparison, like, when you're in the aura of your general, it corn is a pretty good option for you. But when you're not in the aura of your general, it's one of the weaker ones. Um, also worthy of note here is that Zinch doesn't have any offensive buffs um, just off of the auras of chaos. Those are all defensive oriented. So that is something worth noting here as well. You can get reroll ones to save out of Zinch, which is uncommon in general in the game right now. Um, and with the three up save on the Varen Guard, that could be potentially pretty valuable. With uh, a command point, you can get them on a two up save, rerolling ones. So that would be very, very difficult to punch through. Although a three up save in general, uh, going to a two up save with a command point is also really good um, and not that huge of a difference. So overall here, the thing, uh, once again, we're going to take away is that the Demon Forge Blade is really your best option here for uh, damage output. And it's going to take a lot to actually compare with what we're getting out of your Chaos Knights in terms of efficiency, that damage output per point. Um, and I know that seems like a, like a totally abstract number, and it kind of is an abstract idea, um, but this is just to measure efficiency. The total damage output here, I think, is really the point of the comparison between Varengard and Chaos Knights, we're getting a lot more damage packed in with a much smaller footprint. 
you know, three Varen Guard are on the same base size as your Chaos Knights, except you need five Chaos Knights in a unit, and then you're getting less total damage output out of that unit, even though it's more efficient per point. So when you go in and try and get to the same level of damage output, you need to then go to a unit of 10 Chaos Knights, then you have coherency problems and all of those sorts of things. So um, the lesson that I'm really going for here is that they're, that Varengard are really good and there's some very good reasons that they're very good. And we're going to continue going through the different god marks here. Nurgle, this is doing an extra damage on a wound roll of a six. So here, your Fell Spear and your Demon Forge Blade actually come out the same, but um, you'll notice all of this is not quite as good as Corn with the uh, general aura, but the normal hero aura from Corn is less powerful than this. Um, once again, the Demon Forge Blade being the best option out of Nurgle. And then finally, Slanesh. This is coming out slightly better than Nurgle, although the Demon Forge Blade is actually a detriment here because what Slanesh is doing is triggering an additional hit on a hit roll of six. But the Demon Forge Blade is also doing a mortal wound on a hit roll of six so you can't get both the better option is to go with the mortal wounds but that still puts you at a disadvantage compared to uh, what you would have with the demon forge blade otherwise here the fell spear on the charge definitely has a clear advantage over the demon forge blade although on average um your Demon Forge Blade is probably going to be a little bit better than the Fell Spears unless you're really leaning into charges. Um, that can be a tricky one to work with, but certainly something that you can try and do. Um, overall, out of the three different god marks where we get buffs, um, I think, you know, Corn with the aura from the general is going to be your best option, uh, followed by Nurgle, then um, Slanesh is complicated, but up there, um, Zinch down at the bottom, and, you know, Corn without the uh, general aura is going to be at the bottom of the list, uh, just before either Zinch or not having a Chaos Mark. Now, at the bottom here, we have this comparison to Chaos Knights. And the important takeaway here is that the only option that gets us over the efficiency of Chaos Knights is corn in the aura of the general. Now, it's like a fraction difference it's not a huge difference between these different options but this is also your base chaos knights this is not including all of the different buffs that you can get from the different god mark auras so that is something to keep in mind as well because all of that difference is going to show up in the chaos knights too so what I'm personally going for is, I think, for myself, I'm very happy with the choice of Nurgle. I think, um, you know, marking your Varengard Nurgle is definitely an advantage. It's one of the stronger options overall. Slanesh definitely comes out a little bit better on the charge with your Fell Spears, but the demon forge blades being a complication makes slanesh a little bit more hard uh, more difficult to figure out uh what your best option is going to be zinch as i mentioned before that is oriented towards defensive buffs um but what i really want to key in on here 
is that your damage output, your raw damage output that you are getting here is definitely much better on Varengard than it is on Chaos Knights. Why is that so important? Well, the footprint of Varengard is a lot smaller, and in addition, they're much more durable because they have the 3-up save as opposed to the 4-up save of Chaos Knights. In addition, you can also make them all heroes in Knights of the Empty Throne, which then puts you in the General's aura for all of your Varen Guard at all the time, plus they can take artifacts. So in that case, if you're running Knights of the Empty Throne, I would recommend Corn probably, uh, because you can run a unit of six Varen Guard as your general that is throwing around a ton of damage with Demon Forge Blades. In addition, you can ally things into corn that give you additional attacks for low, low prices. Zinch, I do see as a popular mark right now because people like that reroll one to save. I'm not that big of a fan of it. I would personally rather have the extra punchiness when you already have an army that tanks really well, and specifically Varengard tank really well. Uh, because they have that base 3-up save, which easily goes to a 2-up between All Out Defense and Oracular Visions and Mystic Shield and yada yada yada. There's a lot of ways to get Varengard to a 2-up save. And beyond a 2-up save to ignore Rend. So, that is sort of the lesson that I'm going with here, is that your concentration of power with Baron Guard is a lot higher, and I think that is important to note um, when you're making choices in building lists. They're also much more durable, and your Chaos Knights are more efficient at, of killers, but they're not really going to be quite as potent as your Baron Guard are. So you might want to make that sacrifice of some extra points and a little bit less efficiency to go after that higher base damage output. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you all for watching as usual. Hit the like button, subscribe for more. You can turn on notifications to get alerts when our new videos are released. And if you would be so kind, you can also support us on Patreon and come visit us on Twitter and Facebook. Links down in the description below, and I will talk to you all later.